Well, friends, today, as you know, Downsview, it is the 11th of November, Remembrance Day. And most of us find it a day that we are seeking in an appropriate way to honor the memory and the service of the men and women who gave their lives in the service of the kind of lives that we enjoy here among the living. If you're anything like a lot of Christian folks, you may even feel a little bit conflicted today. Sometimes you think to yourself, well, I'm celebrating warfare. Why would a Christian celebrate warfare? And of course, people are quick to say, we're not celebrating war. We're grateful for those who served in the wars for the effect of the kind of, quote, freedom that we enjoy. Others, of course, are saying, no, there's no conflict there at all. It's quite clear that God has used warfare over the years to achieve his purposes, and certainly he's done that, as God does all things well, and God determines the end from the beginning, and God uses uh, even warfare to bring about his will, for certain he does that. And yet, at the same time, there are those who just simply feel a very personal, tangible connection to men and women of the military here in Canada or in the U.S., Perhaps there's people who are still serving. Perhaps there is a long line in history of, of family connections in the, in the military. Sometimes there's no connection, but a sense of nostalgic patriotism. I'm grateful for my country and, and we support those who are constantly fighting to keep our country uh, free and, and keep our country uh, as the Canadian National Anthem says, glorious and free. And both of those things in, in many ways are, are spurious in question. But on the other hand, who wouldn't doubt that there's many, many glorious things about living here in Canada and that the kind of freedom that surely I take for granted, and perhaps you do, with respect to having no sense of how people around the world uh, will have a... Uh, abject lack of the kind of freedom that, that we just assume that we're entitled to. And so, you know, I want to encourage you on a Remembrance Day to do so as Christians, to recognize the, the Lord of all creation as sovereign, as the one who is doing all that he is doing to bring about his purposes for his glory and for the good of his people. And that when we have an opportunity like this to feel a unique sense, perhaps, of of remembrance and even nostalgically remembering those who've gone before us and who have paid the ultimate price that they actually physically laid down their lives for their friends to see the connection to the gospel see the connection to jesus see that all that god does in his creation and in this world is intended to point back to him and so in the midst of what can be a complicated day one of the men that most of you know that i respect highly and appreciate deeply is Tim Challies. Tim writes a blog every day and sometimes a couple of times a day. Tim is an elder at one of our Feb Central Churches at Grace Fellowship Church here in Rexdale. And just a couple of days ago, Tim wrote a, a note about how life is fleeting. As you know, the Challies family has Challies family has just been remarking the one-year anniversary of the sudden tragic passing of their son Nick and you can hear it in Tim's thoughts as he writes this note and I thought on a day like Remembrance Day maybe it'd be helpful for us to help us focus on how it is that we can seek to appreciate people who have experienced loss tremendous loss and those who like us have a difficult time articulating perhaps what they're feeling and, and thinking. So let me, let me share Tim's thoughts with you. He says, I draw a breath and put pen to paper, but the words won't flow. Not yet. I pause for a moment and gather my thoughts. I know I need to prepare an expression of sympathy to write out a letter of condolence to a friend who suffered a tragic loss. I want him to know my love, my support, my comfort in this, his hardest hour. I picture the one who lived and then died, who flourished for a time, but who was soon gone like the flowers that fade, like the dust that blows in the wind. I see once again the fleeting nature of life. Life is fleeting, Charlie says, fleeting like the dew that settles in the grass 
in the dark of night, but then burns away in the earliest heat of the morning. Life is fleeting, fleeting like the leaves of the tree that open in the spring, that catch the light of the sun through the summer, but that fall to the ground in the first cool days of autumn. Life is fleeting, fleeting like the lily that blooms in the darkness of night, displays its beauty for a single day, but that evening fades and wilts away. It's here today, it's gone tomorrow, and its place knows it no more. No wonder the sage says, if a person lives many years, let him rejoice in them all, but let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity, vapor, smoke, dust. There's a time to live and a time to die, but the time to live seems so short and the time dead so long. Still, I must believe that though life is fleeting, life is precious. Though life is over so soon, it matters so much. For though life ends, it continues. For though we sleep in the dust, we rise again. Time is bound to eternity, hence, quote, fear God. Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. It is through life that we prepare for death and through life that we live in this world that we prepare for the life that we will continue to live. Life is precious. Precious like the gold that adorned the temple where God's people were went, meant to bow, to worship, to serve, and to sacrifice. Life is precious like the blood shed hastily on the doorposts, the blood of the Passover lamb that distinguished Israelite from Egyptian, objects of mercy from objects of wrath. Life is precious. It's precious like the jewels upon the high priest as he entered the Holy of Holies to sprinkle blood on the atonement seat to seek God's favor for yet another year. Life is precious like the pearl, the pearl a merchant found that was of such great value that he sold all that he had to acquire it. And he regarded it as the best of all bargains. It is precious, like hidden treasure in a field, precious like the gates of pearl in the new Jerusalem, precious like its streets of gold. And both are true, and neither diminishes the other. Life is feeding, fleeting and fragile, but life is precious and ever so meaningful. Though it is short, it is significant. Though it inevitably ends, it matters so much. Though it is but a blip and a dash, it is of the highest worth. With that in mind, Charlie says, I can prepare an expression of sympathy that accounts for both the significance of a life lived and the tragedy of a life lost, both for the sorrow of a life that ended and the joy of a life that will never end. I think those are helpful thoughts for us, and I pray they'll be helpful to you as you wrestle with your thoughts to seek how we might honor the Lord and give thanks for those who've gone on before us and those who continue to serve us in the military in particular, and with application well beyond a Remembrance Day as well, brothers and sisters. Looking forward to continuing to see how God will work and move and minister in our midst at our church family. See you soon, friends. Cheers.